So some of the strongest empirical evidence for quantum effects in the social sciences are shown by threshold effects. So consider our circuit uh, where we have subjective factors A, which are creating a context which influences the decision B. And um, if we assume the uniform prior for the various probability terms that we've seen, we can assume that interference will add or subtract 25% according to quantum decision theory. And so the difference between a favorable context and an unfavorable one then leads to an expected factor of three difference in propensity. And if we use our energy formula for that, we get that the, the change in energy uh, associated with this uh, gap is equal to uh, the log of the ratio of propensities, which is uh, because three is close to the Euler's number E, so it's going to be about equal to this, which is actually the, the base energy of a quantum harmonic oscillator. Um, the, so the work done in reducing the propensity by a factor E could correspond, for example, to the energy needed to convert a non-buyer into a potential buyer in a transaction. Um, sort of shifting on the propensity curve from one spot to another. And you can view this as the, the cost of changing your mind. So many cognitive phenomena show a threshold effect. An example is preference reversal, where a switch from one context to another creates a large change in the propensity. Um, quantum decision theory analyzes this by normalizing the objective terms to create a utility function which describes the objective factors. So, for example, a decision between two possible options with associated costs x1 and x2 has the objective utility function for the two possible outcomes uh, x1 and x2 here. And the preference reversal criterion then holds if this ratio x2 over x1 is greater than 3, or we can use e as before for mathematical convenience. A related phenomenon is the endowment effect, where people assign a higher value to an object that they own and are selling than to one that they do not own and are buying. Uh, and this can be viewed as another example of preference reversal since the context has changed from selling to buying. The effect has been illustrated in a number of experiments, the best known being one in which subjects were given a mug and then offered the chance to sell or exchange it. The experiments found that people demanded more than twice as much in exchange for the mug, a median selling price of $7.12, as they were willing to spend to purchase the mug themselves, which uh, they were only going to offer $2.87. And the price ratio is then about 2.5, so close to E. Another example, the, the ultimatum game. So in this game, two subjects are offered an award of, say, $10, but are given an ultimatum. One must decide how to split the money, and the other has to decide whether to accept the offer. If the offer is rejected, all the money is returned, so they both lose. The standard theory, based on rational utility maximizing behavior, would imply that any offer would be accepted, no matter how low, because it's better than nothing. However, the game is being performed in many countries around the world, and the results consistently show that people reject an offer that is overly cheap, with about half of all responders rejecting offers below $3. Following the same procedures above for this threshold between the two scenarios gives a utility ratio of 2.33. And again, this can be viewed as a variant of preference reversal since the context has changed from price setter to price taker. So usually these uh, cognition experiments are done in controlled sort of settings with uh, uh, ex sort of experimental surveys, but there was a natural experiment for preference reversal uh, as provided by the observed rate of strategic default during the U.S. housing crisis. Now, according to objective utility maximization, default makes sense if the costs associated with sa staying at home exceed the cost associated with selling it. And in fact, there were surveys done which showed that people said they were willing to default if that were the case. But according to a report from the Federal Reserve, the median borrower walks away from his home when he is 62% underwater, which surprised many observers at the time. So, uh, assuming a small down payment, the cost ratio of finding a replacement at the new lower price to the cost of staying at home is therefore about 2.63, which again is close to E. And uh, so this turned out to be, you know, people did not strategically default nearly as much as they should have, according to classical theory. And this turned out to be very important because it would have, would have cost an estimated three quarters of a trillion dollars to restore all underwater borrowers. So we can apply this uh, threshold idea to uh, the 
uh, money objects, which we discussed earlier. So for a tally, a tally stick with a, a face value of x0, the energy gap in changing from a default of probability 1 in the absence of coercion, so that means 100% chance that the person is not going to honor the debt, to a smaller probability of default p, so that's high coercion, is given by this formula here, which again is just the can be expressed as hw over 2, where uh, or omega over 2, where omega is this thing here, which involves the, the face value and a logarithm 1 over p, where p is the probability of default. So this is a frequency, and uh, which is in, in physics is associated with color. In American idiom, the color of someone's money means proof that someone is going to pay you. So the quantum interpretation gives a, another angle on that. So in general, these, these threshold effects uh, occur when a minimum energy is needed in order to affect change, to close a deal, to make a transaction happen, whatever, um, or to get a lodger out of their house. Um, and it's similar to the photoelectric effect in physics, which occurs because a quantum of energy is required in order to dislodge an electron from an atom. So here, uh, money objects are playing the role of photons.